Good morning students this is Kavya in today's class i will explain you how a transistor can be worked as an amplifier one second i will show this slide so in previous class i have discussed about the basics of a transistor and configurations of a transistor right so when do transistors were invented in 1947 in 1947 transistors were invented by three scientists at bell laboratories names of the scientists are william shockley john bardeen and walter breton so transistor means transferring resistor i mean transferring the resistivity property property and a transistor consisting of a three elements or three terminals emitter base and collector and in size wise base is the smaller one and collector is the larger one and emitter is the moderate one by doping wise emitter is the larger one i mean emitter is having a high doping collector is having a moderate doping and base is having a less doping and also i have explained you about the Types of transistors, right? Transistors are classified into NPN transistors and PNP transistors. And then I have, I mean, NPN transistor means P-type semiconductor is sandwiched in between the two N-type semiconductors. PNP transistor means N-type semiconductor is sandwiched in between the P-type semiconductors. And then we have seen transistor biased in active region and transistor current components. And I have explained to you about the configurations right so we are having the three configurations they are common base configuration common emitter configuration common collector configuration so in this three configuration whatever the configuration may be if it is a cb the base is a common terminal for both the input and output if it is a common collector configuration collector is common for both input and output configure output terminals if it is a common emitter configuration emitter terminal is common for both the input and output terminals, right? So in today's class, we will see how transistor acts as an amplifier. So what is an amplifier? So first before amplifier, I will tell you what is amplification process. So amplification process means increasing the strength of a weak signal or in other terms, we can say changing the low intensity signal to a high intensity signal or simply if if we have any weak signal by adding the strength it becomes a strong signal right that process is known as a amplification that phenomenon is known as a amplification and the device which is used in this phenomenon is known as a amplifier that is the difference between amplifier and amplification amplification is a process amplifier amplifier is an electronic device which performs the amplification process i repeat again amplification means the process of increasing the strength of a weak signal is known as amplification or increasing the intensity of a low signal to a high intensity is known as a amplification and the device which is used in amplification process is known as a amplifier so now we will see how can how transistor acts as an amplifier so for this purpose transistor should be in an active region so in previous class i have explained you a short trick transistor in active region means there is a shortcut efcr right so efcr means emitter junction should be in a forward bias and collector junction should be in a reverse bias so and we are also having a various types of configurations right saturation region active region inverse active region cutoff region like like this we are having various regions but for this purpose a transistor as an amplifier the transistor should be in a active region active region means input side emitter junction should be in a forward bias and collector side collector junction should be in a reverse bias so now we will see what happens observe the circuit so in this circuit we are having a transistor right so that's that transistor is a npn transistor why because if you observe the arrow mark that is outside facing that outside so we can say it is a npn transistor so npn transistor means emitter is a n type semiconductor 
base is a p type semiconductor and collector is a n type semiconductor so what i have said now the first input junction should be in a forward bias so now just observe so i have said e emitter is a n type semiconductor so n type semiconductor is given to the negative terminal of the battery right so negative negative positive positive means forward bias so input side is a in forward bias and if you observe the output side so collector is a made up of n type semiconductor and that n type semiconductor is given to the positive terminal of the vcc so if we connect the opposite terminals that means we can say it is in a reverse bias do you remember forward bias and reverse bias forward bias means positive terminal of the semiconductor should be given to the positive terminal of the battery then we can say it is in a forward bias as well as negative terminal to the negative terminal of the battery and reverse bias means the positive terminal of the battery is given to the n type semiconductor and and vice versa so that is forward bias and reverse bias so here input junction is in a forward bias and output junction is in a reverse bias so it is in a active region and here we are having a vee so that is input voltage that is in emitter side that's why we are representing it with a vee input voltage if you observe the output side voltage we are having vcc why because it is it is at the collector side so we are representing simply it with a vcc and input side we are having a resistance re emitter resistance and the current is ie emitter current and also here we are having a veb which is a base emitter voltage which is a input voltage and observe at the output side at the output side we are having a ic ic means nothing but a collector current which is a output current and vcb means collector base voltage rc means collector resistance and vcc means collector voltage outputs a collector voltage and we will take the output v not across the resistance rc so what i have said now amplification means increasing the strength of a weak signal right so for example at the input side i am giving a weak signal which is having about a 2 volts so after the amplification process through the transistor at the output side v not could be 10 volts so at the input side vi i am applying a 2 volt signal the signal which is having a 2 volts i am applying at the input side at the output side v not is a 10 volts i am getting that so av av means gain so av is equal to output voltage by input voltage so what can we write voltage gain is equal to output voltage means 10 by input voltage is a 2 so 10 by 2 means nothing but a 5 so that is nothing but that 5 is nothing but a amplification factor so we can simply say it depends upon the amplification factor so amplification factor gain av can be calculated by the output voltage by input voltage so now we will see how this transistor can be acts as an amplifier so whenever i have applied a weak signal at the input side so that weak signal is having some variations i have applied the weak signal at the vee so because of the variations in in that signal veb input voltage should changes varies v vi sorry vi which is a base emitter voltage should be changes so whenever there is a change in input voltage input current also changes what is the input current here ie why because we know the formula ohms law v is equal to ir v voltage is directly proportional to the current so whenever there is a change in voltage there should be also change in the current so here i am applying the input voltage at the vi so whenever there is a change in vi there should be a change in the input current ie so according to the output characteristics of a transistor whenever there is a change in the input current there is a change in the major change in the output current important point whenever there is a small change in the input current there is a major change in the output current so that the purpose is a transistor works like that only so whenever there is a small change in the input side there is a small change in ie emitter current there will be large change in the ic so if you are having a large current at the output side so we will get the 
when that large current flows through the resistance we will get the output also large value as i said now if i apply a weak signal of 2 volts after passing through the transistor and after changes at the output side we will get as a 10 volts so it is increasing right 10 volts to 10 volt 2 volts to 10 volts so five times it is increasing so that's why that's how it is acting as a amplifier for easy to in easy way to understand i will tell you one example so, suppose in a meeting i am speaking through a mic my voice is my sound is very low when i am speaking through the mic but through the speakers the sound may be the sound intensity will be high right so because of that speaker my sound is amplifying so i am speaking through the mic with a low intensity my my sound my audio waves are low waves but through the speaker you are getting the high intensity waves so we can say in, in speakers we use a transistor as an amplifier that is a simple example now we will see the simple derivation here so so now only i said voltage gain means nothing but output voltage by input voltage right so we can write av means voltage gain av is equal to v not by vi so but we know from ohms law v is equal to ir right so from the diagram we can write v not is equal to output voltage is equal to what output current into output resistance so what is the output current in the circuit ic collector current and collector resistance so simply we can write output voltage is equal to ic into rc why i am writing ic and rc here because ic and rc are output current and output resistance we should not write ie and re they are the input current and they are input resistance here i am talking about the output voltage v not so simply i am writing v not is equal to ic into rc but we know alpha is equal to ic by ie right so alpha means amplification factor output current by input current so i am writing alpha is equal to ic by ie so from that we can write ic is equal to alpha into ie so just replace ic so here in here equation number 1 v not is equal to ic rc so i am just replacing that with this particular value equation 2 substitute equation number 2 in equation number 1 then we will get v not is equal to alpha ie into rc right so from the circuit the input voltage is ie and re now we can write the input current and input resistance so whereas i am talking about the input voltage v is equal to i r so from the circuit input current is ie input resistance is re so we will write vi is equal to re and ie into re now we can write voltage gain av is equal to v not by vi and substitute those two values v not is equal to alpha ie into rc by vi input voltage is equal to ie into re and ie ie gets cancelled then we will get alpha rc by re so that is the voltage gain so just assume just take the values alpha as a 0.98 volts and re as a 40 ohms and rc is a 4 kilo ohms then just cal if we calculate that values we will get as a 98 so voltage gain is a 98 so if you apply a input signal at the amplifier is 10 milli volts av is equal to voltage gain v not by vi then we will get at the output at 0.98 volts so you can clearly observe the difference i am giving the input voltage as a 10 milli volts which is a smaller value but at the output side i am getting the v not as a 0.98 volts so that is about the transistor as an amplifier simple key point is a very important point is whenever there is a change in the input current whenever there is a small change in the input current there should be a major change in the output side current so that is the simple phenomenon of the transistor acts as an amplifier and transistor can also be used as a switches and oscillator also and now we will see another topic just a second so next topic is letter symbols for a semiconductor device so we are having a various symbols so the instantaneous symbols are represented with the lower case letters and the rms values are represented with the capital letters just observe the first point here so 
quantity symbols instantaneous values of current voltage and power which vary with time are represented by the lower case letters and next maximum value or average value and rms values are represented by the upper case letter so lower case and upper case letters means alphabetics and the subscripts for the quantity symbols are so capital e and small e means emitter electrode capital c and small c means collector collector electrode capital b small b means base electrode capital j small j means general electrode capital m small m means minimum maximum value av capital av small av means av means average value q means average value with the signal applied dc that is a dc and dc and instantaneous values instantaneous total values are indicated by the upper case subscriptions by varying these components indirect indicated by the lower subscriptions maximum and average values are represented by the addition of subscripts m and av respectively just here i'm just here the concept is just representation of the symbols so lower case symbols and upper case symbols instantaneous values represents the lower case letters and rms values are represented by the upper case letter and subscriptions with that electrodes emitter electrode collector electrode base electrode the letter symbols for various electrical quantities involved in a transistor device may be read directly by using the following basic symbol charts so if you observe the symbol here so ivp they are the symbols capital ivp small ivp for so for in for current voltage and power and here it, this side we are having a subscripts for emitter base and collector and general electrode j means general electrode so they represents the instantaneous varying comp component rms or effective varying component value instantaneous total value and average dc value and the supply voltages are indicated by repeating the electrode subscript example vee vcc and vbb the reference electrode may be designed designated by the third subscript example veeb vccb now only i explain in circuit at the input side we are having a vee what is that vee that is nothing but the supplying input voltage that's why you are saying it as a supply voltage or sorry indicated by vee if you are having a reference electrode then we will represent it as a third digit by third subscript by the veev and next one is subscript sequence and the first subscript designates the electrode at which the current is measured or whether the or where the electrode is me measured with respect to the reference electrode or design designated by the second subscript so if we if we have taken a common base amplifier as shown in the figure so first one is a an npn common base amplifier and second one is a pnp common base amplifier so if you observe the arrow mark based on the arrow mark we can see whether it is a npn or whether it is a pnp and you can remember simply so first one if you observe the first one npn emitter is a n type semiconductor base is the p type semiconductor and collector is a n type semiconductor right npn so the arrow mark should be always positive to negative simply you can remember like this arrow mark should be always positive to negative so base is a positive here emitter is a negative here so we can represent from arrow mark from base to the emitter and the arrow, arrow mark should be placed always on the emitter only not on the collector emitter the arrow mark should be always placed on the emitter only if you observe the pnp so pnp means emitter is a p type semiconductor base is a n type semiconductor collector is a p type semiconductor now only i said the current always travels from positive to negative so p to n so the arrow mark is placed from p type to negative negative so emitter to base so that's why the arrow mark is inside in pnp and the arrow mark is outside in the npn so uh, the letters the letter indicated the letter symbols are indicated like this ie vb vcb ic ie so these are the conventional polarities of currents and voltages in npn pnp amplifiers so here again we are having veb so which is instantaneous varying component of emitter to base voltage and next we are having a v capital eb in suffix instantaneous total value of emitter to base voltage veeb means emitter bias voltage veb means 
DC component of a emitter to base voltage. IE means instantaneous varying component of a emitter current. I suffix capital E means instantaneous total value of a emitter current. Capital I suffix capital E means DC component of a emitter current. So from the above circuit, we can write VEB is equal to capital VEB plus small VEB, which is nothing but VEE plus VEB. So that is small I E is equal to capital I E plus small I E. So here VCB means instantaneous varying component of a collector to base voltage. And similarly, VCB means instantaneous total value of a collector to base voltage. And again, VCC means collector bias voltage. VCB means DC component of collector to base voltage. IC means instantaneous varying component of a collector current. And IC means instantaneous total value of a collector current. And capital IC means DC component of a collector current. Similarly, we can write from the circuit as a VCB is equal to VCB plus VCB. So you should remember which is a capital V, which is a small b, which is a lower, lower letters and uppercase letters, subscript also. And capital VCB is equal to capital VCC plus VL, where VL is the DC component of a voltage across the load resistor. So in order to remember all this, you can simply remember this chart. By learning this, this chart, you can easily remember all the, which are instantaneous varying component, which are instantaneous total value, which are RMS or effective varying component values, or which are average values. So that's it for the today's class. So in today's class, we have learned about how transistor acts as an amplifier. The basic key point is whenever there is a small change in the input current, there will be a major change in the output side current. So thanks for watching. In next class, we will see another topic. Thank you.